Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Sivia Schwartz Getzig. I'm the West Coast Director for the Jewish Funders Network. Um, and for those of you who aren't familiar with JFN, uh, we are an international network of Jewish funders, um, from individuals to family foundations, large foundations to federations and community foundations. Our mission is to provide a platform for Jewish philanthropists to improve the quality of their giving and maximize their impact as they make the change they want to see in the world. We see our role as leveraging the power and creativity of the network to pro produce change in the Jewish world, and when necessary, like today, to provide support to our worldwide community in times of crisis and need. Unfortunately, this is the second community crisis briefing we've hosted in less than a month, and we continue to offer our support and resources to our family in Pittsburgh. This morning, our panelists are Jay Sanderson, the CEO of the Jewish Federation, Rabbi Paul Kipnis of Congregation Or Ami, Bill Kaplan, the Executive Director of the Shalom Institute, and Doug Lynn, the Executive Director of the Wilshire Boulevard Camps. Um, first, I just want to say to all of you how sorry I am personally and as a colleague for the trauma and the tremendous loss that you and your communities and all of us have suffered as a result of the fires. And I, I really hope that this briefing is just the first step in helping you to recover and rebuild. So um, Jay, let's start with you. If you could share with us your perspective um, on the events of the past week with your 30,000 foot view of the community, that would be great. Thanks, Sylvia, and uh, thank you for doing this. Um, I have a 30,000 feet view, and as of yesterday, I, I was on the ground driving wherever I could get in to, to look at uh, the impact of these fires. I want to start by saying it's impossible from the outside to understand the devastation on the inside and, um, and how, not just institutionally, but how individuals and families have just suffered tremendous trauma in terms of being uh, asked to leave their homes, losing their homes, uh, losing their ability to go to school. We have schools closed until after Thanksgiving. Um, the amount of impact on the Jewish community and the communities in the, in, the, in the valleys and in Malibu area is just beyond devastating. And from the Federation's perspective, we felt like this is our job. Our job is to jump in and, and become the center of the community and reach out to everyone, including my, my three colleagues that are on this call and, and every institution and open up. What we did was we opened up a 24 seven, uh, not 24 seven, but a, a 12 hour daily hotline. Uh, we have a, we're in a crisis center now. Um, where social workers and attorneys and, and people from Jewish Free Loan and others are, are here and we will continue to give everything and anything we can to the individuals and families affected and everything and anything we can to uh, the camps, the synagogues, the school, Ilan Ramon and the other institutions affected. So, you know, I'll just end by saying um, the devastation is, is pretty significant. What people that haven't gone through something like this might not know is it will take days, weeks, months, and years for us to recuperate and, and for us to really understand the depth and breadth of the, of the impact of these fires, both uh, physically, institutionally, emotionally, and psychologically. And we lost... Yes, no, I'm here. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I'm here, sorry. Um, Bill, um, actually, I'm sorry. Let me start with Paul. Um, Paul, can you tell us, um, you know, what's hap how are you, what's happening in your community, and um, how are you holding up? Uh, I hit a wall yesterday, and uh, we were going to have a pop-up religious school, and we canceled it and sent my staff home. They've been working... Uh, uh, probably about uh, 19 hours a day, seven days a week for, for a week. Uh, we started out uh, with the shooting, which was, I guess, a week ago Wednesday. Uh, we actually had one kid from my synagogue, a rabbi's kid, who was dancing in there and literally dodged a bullet. That's, the, by the way, the, the shooting in, in Thousand, Thousand Oaks, Oaks at the borderline bar. Yeah. Uh, and we were, uh, that day, 
started with calling everyone within 30 miles of that place from the congregation. We had people calling all over and uh, dealing with supporting first responders. And then the fires came and that was it. Um, and we've been going ever since. It became clear very quickly that this fire was going to go and, uh, and go through the swath of it. I'm faculty dean at uh, Camp Newman up north uh, that we lost uh, to the fires in Santa Rosa. And so uh, down here, uh, we immediately got to work to try to uh, organize. Uh, in the end, it looks like no less than eight synagogues, uh, uh, probably another five Chabad uh, uh, houses, <coughs> and uh, other uh, synagogue type uh, organizations were evacuated. At least uh, six of them were in the midst of fires. I just got pictures that it was all the way up to uh, the sign in front of our building. I thought the synagogue was toast for about uh, a couple of, uh, about a, a day. Uh, thankfully, it's okay, just uh, terrible smoke damage and ash and whatever. Um, we, uh, it became clear early on that our synagogue, uh, in the heart of one edge part of the fire, 70% uh, of our synagogue was evacuated. That was a guesstimate based on areas. We have since, we have called our congregants two times, every congregant two times with the help of local people and people all over the country. And we now can confirm that uh, at a certain point, at least 80% uh, evacuated. Similarly, in uh, a number of other synagogues, Valley Outreach Synagogue, uh, Adad Elohim is maybe even higher. Um, we, uh, we know that uh, we've lost homes. Uh, we know that we have, I've been on the phone with, with college kids outside off at college who are a mess because uh, their family was going through this and they couldn't do it. Uh, I've been on the phone with uh, trauma therapists and uh, people from Houston, uh, from the flood, Santa Rosa, and the shooting in Parkland to learn from them. And what we're learning is the trauma for this thing is just beginning. Um, uh, personally, I'll tell you, I'm in PTSD now and I got a, an appointment with my shrink in, uh, in a couple hours because uh, uh, it, it's just overwhelming. A um, uh, lot of people losing homes, uh, the, the fixing up of homes, uh, we know from Santa Rosa uh, is, uh, even if your insurance is good, in many, many cases, it is just not good enough. And uh, my colleagues up there say there are people walking away because they cannot rebuild. Uh, and cleaning, those who are cleaning out of houses, it is just intense. I also want to recognize that this is not the first crisis. We just talk, we talked about Sivia, um, uh, uh, the shooting in, in Pittsburgh, uh, my heart breaks. We have Santa Rosa, we have uh, Houston, we have Parkland all over. It's just going to keep coming. One of the most helpful things that happened with the strategic, two things, uh, with the strategic uh, advice of, of Jewish Federation, uh, we brought in a, a crisis manager brought all the synagogues together, also a line remote, the camps were too far out, and a different uh, challenge for it. And they have been guiding us on how to communicate, how to um, uh, uh, talk to our people, how to get information out, out to our people. We set up a day camp on day one. We had no money, we had no plans. Rabbi Julie Weiss, my associate, just said, let's do it. We opened up at the local high school, uh, De Toledo High School, and had people coming in. Uh, there were a lot of people, at first no one, adults were coming in for support, they were coming in to help. And everybody who helped, I kept getting pulled out of this meeting or that, and the social workers from uh, Jewish Family Service that Federation brought in, uh, were counseling those people. No one wants to ask for help, but they're all deeply in need of help. Uh, the last thing I'll say is the partnership with Jewish Federation has been outstanding. Uh, Jay, uh, Becky Silverman Stern, uh, and, and others, Jewish Family Service, the social service agencies. Uh, as we find out what we need, we needed a team camp. I think in less than 24 hours, uh, Jay's team put it together over at Temple Aliyah with uh, Jay, Rabbi Jay Goldstein. Um, and uh, we're looking forward to pushing that forward. The community is coming together. Uh, but I can tell the, this is going to be a long time to fix up. Anyways, I can answer questions later. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, all right, Bill, you've been with the Shalom Institute and Camp JCA Shalom for more than 30 years. Is that right? 
28 years, about two weeks ago, mm -hmm. celebrated. Well, I would imagine losing camp is almost like, like losing your home. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, I was also a camper. I started there in Malibu in 1976. Wow. So, and Barton Flats, we had another facility in the San Bernardino Mountains. And my, my sister was in the first year at 72 when the, we opened our Malibu campus. So. Can you tell us what's happened at camp, at the Shalom Institute. Uh, well, it's uh, not there anymore. That's basically what happened. It's, uh, we cannot get back to our site right now. It may take a couple more days because of the danger of power lines and sinkholes. We understand and it's just, but what we've seen in aerial footage and we do have some pictures and other things right now, the aerial footage, it's a, it's like a bomb hit the whole valley and our buildings are there. There's fireplaces left. We have, haven't seen the cabin area. But what we've seen, it's from everything else, it's pretty, it's pretty much destroyed. About half of our motel facility, it was a 24-room kind of retreat center motel, is there, we think. Um, but pretty much everything else has been completely destroyed. So uh, we have not been able to get there, so we, don't, we can't be on site. But from what the from officials and from some press and some other things, that we, we, we know what's there. And it's not there. So um, we've moved into a different mode. I think Jay and the Federation, we're now, we're at the Federation Valley Alliance offices, which are now half the Shalom Institute offices now, uh, which is amazing. It's also amazing that, um, as Paul was talking about, in terms of getting help and therapy, JFS has moved in here to help with the situation, Jewish Free Home, <coughs> Bethsaidic Legal Services. So we actually brought in, we had 29 staff or 29 people living, some with families living on site that are now right. displaced. Um, some are food service and uh, kitchen staff, and we're <coughs> now not offering food service and kitchen on our current site <laughs> at this point. So uh, we brought everybody in yesterday. Um, it has been a, a tremendous effort by our families and the community. I mean, collecting clothes and, and people just, we just left. I mean, we barely, got out. I have pictures. I probably should not have taken pictures while driving on Decker Canyon Road, <laughs> but I have pictures that would, I didn't think I almost didn't make it out. And the two people that did not make it out uh, in that area, we were at 34342 Mulholland Highway. They were the 33,000 block of the two people that they found uh, there. So I just can imagine if we were there for another half hour or hour, uh, we got our animals out. We got our year-round staff. Fortunately, they weren't, we weren't running programs. We were supposed to run three programs, Diller Team Fellows, the Westside JCC Family Camp, and, uh, and our Shrewd Leo Long Team Leadership Senior Fellowship that, that weekend. So they were not on site. And that's, you know, there was no loss of life. So that was, um, we just lost this beautiful, magical facility that included the Marla Bennett Israel Discovery Center and Garden. It was just, just had a fundraiser, the Garden of Eden, where we were just like magical. Like this garden has just flourished. Marla was one of the victims of the Hebrew University bombing in 2002, grew up in our camp. And it's just, it's not there, you know, so it's, uh, it's nothing's there. It's all that we work for. However, we are, uh, we're moving fast. We're going to be running a winter camp someplace. We're already have, you know, some places we're looking at summer year round programs. We sh are, we run a social enterprise, Shemesh enterprises for adults with developmental disabilities. As of, uh, right now, we, about half an hour ago, we have a new location. Um, and we already have new locations for some of our other year round programs. So we're just moving on and trying to handle the trauma you know, it's when you create a staff culture and a, a whole camp community, it's just, you know, it's camps there. For some of these kids, it's their second home and sometimes their home. So it's just we're trying to just transition, knowing that we just, there's nothing there. Hmm. All right. Um, your neighbors to the, is it south? Uh, uh, Northwest. West. 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 Actually, kind of west. It's a weird angle. It's actually, I think, direct west. But I, I shouldn't have even tried. Um, Doug, um, I, I see Seth is on as well. Hi, Seth. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Seth is the director of the Wilshire Boulevard Camp. Um, Doug is the executive director. Um, Doug, do you want to? We read yesterday that uh, Hilltop and Hess Kramer not only have been home to so many generations of, of the Jewish community, but non-Jews alike. 
um, which was really inspiring to hear. Um, I'm wondering if you can give us an update on, uh, Doug, on what, uh, what's happening. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, very similar to, to the Shalom Institute, you know, there's not much left at our camps. Uh, we haven't had access to it, but we have had a staff member or two who have been able to gain access through some different methods. Um, yeah, and um, it's devastating. The outpouring from the community has been the silver lining to all of this, but the actual destruction has been very hard for our kids, our staff, our, our alumni, and as you mentioned, our, our, our partners in all of this for many, many years to handle it. Yeah. The Chicano Leadership Group has been coming since the early 60s when they planned the walkouts on our site. Every year, twice a year, they've been coming. So there's been a lot of outpouring from the whole community, not just our campers and our alumni. Yeah, um, but it has been very, very overwhelming for all. Uh, do you have my screen now? Yep, we do. Uh, so, um, on Thursday, we had about 200 people on site uh, for some of our rental groups, Camp Powerment, the LA County Outdoor Science School uh, was going on, and we had a, an incoming group from a local temple that was planning a fam family camp. Yeah. By Friday afternoon, after we evacuated those 200 people, camp looked like this. We had the fire coming right over the mountain towards Neptune's Net, for those of you who are local, know that bar, iconic, with our camp right next door. And by Friday at 7.30, it was this. And this was taken by a reporter who was walking by. That's our caretaker's home, climbing wall, and one of our major fields. Yeah, we had damage on most buildings, dining hall. The office did survive, and the infirmary survived, two of the original buildings from camp right in the center. But from there, we start to get into the destruction. Caretaker's home. Housing units. Guru Hall, a rec hall, original building of camp. The pool house and library. Our chapel. Cabins have been destroyed. The entire cabin area is gone. But some things remain. The iconic images of camp somehow survive. <laughs> yeah, I can keep going through, but I think I'll stop right there. Yeah. Needless to say, the destruction's been complete. You know, our hilltop camp is nothing but rubble. Uh, some foundations, a couple of fireplaces, and that's pretty much all that remains. Uh, at Kramer, we were a little bit more lucky. You know, two of our major structures have remained, but other than that, everything's gone. Out of about 95 individual structures at camp, uh, 85 of them are nothing. Uh, but the outpouring from the community has been amazing. Uh, our community has rallied around. Uh, within six hours of putting out an announcement that we were gathering together for Havdalah, 297 people showed up on the west side of LA. We live streamed it out to another 15,000 people worldwide were watching. Um, you know, we've been doing pop-up events, you know, 17 different community-wide events, Arizona, Israel, New York, California, Southern California, Northern California, you know, anywhere where there's more than two uh, Wilshire alum or current families, they've figured out a way to be together in these moments and put their arms around each other and cry together and laugh together and share memories and stories and start to heal. And we're going to heal, and we're going to do it. Uh, we, already, we're looking at sites for next summer. Uh, already, we're taking care of our staff that are no longer have homes. Uh, already, people are coming out of the woodwork with offers of food, clothing, guest houses, apartments, whatever it takes is what we're going to do. Um, and, uh, and, and I have to say right now, thank you, Jay, for the leadership of the Federation. You guys have put together an amazing group of uh, resources that have really helped so many people who've been affected by this. Uh, without your leadership, without the leadership of the Federation, 
I'm not sure would be providing the level of care and comfort to our community that we are. So thank you. Thanks. Uh, but there are needs coming up, you know, there are going to be long-term needs. You know, we are not at all going to be done with this for years to come. You know, long haul, and we're all ready for it. I'm not sure we're all mentally really understand what that means. I spent a lot of time talking to Ruben Arquilovich, who's the director up at Newman. Um, yeah, a good friend and has been so generous with his time and expertise. And the one thing he keeps hammering home is, don't think it's going to go fast because it's not. Everything takes time, time, and time. So thank you for convening this so that we can share our stories and we can start to come up with a, a long-term solution to what's gonna be a long-term problem, but one that we're gonna overcome together. Thanks. And, and Sylvia, there's two more pieces. Uh, there's another organization not sitting at this table, so everyone should know that we had a day school that I toured yesterday, uh, in the Alain Ramon School uh, in Agora, that is, is devastated. They have about two buildings left in that school. Um, I was on site for 15 minutes before my, I thought my head was gonna explode because the, 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 the environmental impact, which is another issue that's gonna be with us for a while, I couldn't breathe so well, so I had to leave. And lastly, when we're talking about trauma, we, we've already begun the conversations with our partner, the Israel Trauma Coalition. We've decided with vacations and everything coming up, that we would bring in a, a team from the Israel Trauma Coalition to work with all these young people and all these other folks who have been affected in early January. Um, once, once we really know what's going on, um, that's the expectation going forward is the Israel Trauma Coalition will be in LA uh, for a big part of January. Jay, can you um, uh, tell us a little bit more about, um, there were a few things mentioned, about the various resources that are available to the communities right now. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure, There's a, we, have, we set up a hotline that's uh, working from eight to eight, seven days a week. Um, as uh, Bill said, we're sitting right now in the Valley offices of the Federation, which soon will be, uh, we'll have a couple of social workers, lawyer, um, Jewish free loan. They're here, uh, they're here now. Yes, <clears throat> um, we are talking to people uh, who are going to guide us with insurance. Our real estate professional organization, um, which are the, uh, the principals of major real estate companies, have broken down in three major teams. Uh, one is working with the Wilshire Boulevard Temple Camps, one is going to be working with the Shalom Institute, and one's going to be working with Elan Ramon on site issues, on environmental issues, on insurance issues, on negotiating with FEMA. I mean, there are so many elements of this. And as Paul related, you know, we, are, we certainly are learning from what happened in past tragedies. Um, and so there's a, there are a thousand things, honestly, that we're trying to put into place right now uh, without even anticipating the things we don't know. Um, so the, the immediate need, I think, is what people are um, wanting to hear about. Uh, from all of you, I know that there have been a number of funds set up. What, what is it that people who, from each of you, what is it that people who want to be able to provide some sort of support, at least in the near term, can do? And then the, set, my, the second part of the question is, how can people keep uh, up to date on what's happening and what your long-term needs are? Well, the up-to-date part is a good question. And I guess it's something that we're going to have to figure out how we can communicate that out. Um, I think most institutions do have set up funds. The Federation's Wildfire uh, Relief Fund is 100% going to need. We're setting up a committee. We'll be focusing, obviously, on individuals, but we're also going to be focusing on our institutional partners. Um, you know, as, as Bill alluded to, we've opened up these offices we have for free office space for anybody that doesn't have a place to go. So we'll be, we're raising money for the overall community. We'll be working directly with the synagogues that Paul talked, talked about. We'll be working directly with, with Bill and Doug and Seth and uh, Yuri at Ilan Ramon. This is an ongoing situation. I'll let the others talk about their specific funds, but we're, you know, we're trying to raise as much money as possible for right now and then work directly with these other, with the major institutions on a long-term plan because to rebuild, um, Shalom Institute Camp JCA and the Wilshire Boulevard Temple Camps is a multi-year process. Uh, Ilan Ramon needs to be dealt with a little more immediately. 
So we are, we are literally offering everything we can to, to move forward in raising months, monies to do everything. We don't at all want to be competitive with what anyone else is doing. Our goal is to make our partners better and not to compete with them. Great. Um, Bill, uh, Doug, do you want to talk a little bit about what your needs are and how people can be helpful? Sure. Doug, you want to go ahead? Sure. I mean, our, our immediate needs are, uh, are, are pretty simple. I mean, we have the immediate needs of caring for our staff. You know, who lost, you know. We lost our second home. Many of our staff lost their home you know, and all their belongings and are displaced right now and trying to figure out what next steps are. Uh, so our immediate needs are the psychosocial, emotional care of those people, as well as expertise in finding housing, temporary housing to permanent housing. Um, as well as, quite frankly, you know, uh, you know, dollars, dollars to help them get back on their feet. You know, they, 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 like everybody, were insured, but insurance, as you all know, is never enough to cover the full loss of what's going on. In their lives. You know, those are the immediate needs for our full-time staff. We also have a, a year on staff who are not, who didn't lose their homes, but we don't know what, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. We have 43 employees who worked in food service, on the grounds, and housekeeping. You know, all of those, all of those functions in our camps are probably not coming back anytime soon, and so we need to figure out how to train them, how to help them move on, how to help them with their resumes, all of those things. And then the biggest immediate need for the camps, I'm sure, Bill, you're feeling this pressure every moment of every day right now, like I am, is where are we going this summer? Yeah. You know, where can we find a place that between the two camps, I'm guessing, we need to find facilities that can overnight a thousand people at a time between both of us, you know, and that is a, a daunting task, to say the least. You know, so if anybody knows of uh, you know, a conference center that's not busy over the summer, a uh, summer camp that just went out of business yesterday, uh, we're your guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's actually been good with Ruben and Newman from their experience and them looking at for actually other camps in the area. They sent us lists and people are reaching out, which is incredible. And I'd have to say, sadly, that my, our story is the same story as Doug's story. We're dealing with our staff, dealing with, you know, the transition of the year round. What do we do with all this program staff? We run a lot of programs year round. So our hope is we are to transfer those programs to other locations and, and to be able to, you know, just shift our operation right now. And it's really just, uh, that's the beginning. So in terms of our relief funds, it's really taking care of staff and figuring out what, where we go, where we go next, but I think both of us, you know, we're, we're, we're down, but we're not out, you know, we're, 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 we're camp people. So camp people are, you know, we're just going to figure it out and how to, how to move forward because we have so many of our campers, you know, and year round campers that have just been displaced and uh, we're going to find homes and we're going to continue to do what we do because camping is such a huge, tremendous impact and we're going to continue that experience for them. Paul, um, you don't necessarily have buildings, although some of your congregants do, and I'm sure congregants of some of the other synagogues in the community. Um, is, is there something that uh, folks that are on this call can do to support, aside, of course, from supporting the Federation's fund and from you know the services that are being provided by JFS and Beit Sedek and, um, and others, Jewish Free Loan, I understand, um, how else can people help you in the community? Look, we are, um, what's, what are synagogues? Um, we are a collection of individuals. Uh, a community is a collection of individuals and, and there's a large under-affiliated, under-engaged community and, and that's uh, particularly where Federation comes in and has been fantastic, uh, uh, increasingly, increasingly, increasingly year after year. Um, but the synagogues comprise a large number of, of, of households. Um, first, the synagogues themselves, there's going to be a delta between what insurance will cover and what needs to be done. Um, their, you know, toys, books, games are all going to get thrown out, so we'll get new ones. The prayer books, can they be cleaned? I mean, there, it was a toxic mess uh, in these, uh, uh, from these fires. Uh, I know they brought in the Army Corps of Engineers to clean up uh, Camp Newman up north. Uh, they're not going to do that to clean up uh, the synagogues or people's homes, but we are going to, you know, insurance will bring in those companies. But there's going to be a huge delta. We know that from Santa Rosa between uh, that. That's one thing. 
Uh, secondly, is um, uh, people are coming to coming now and come all the time to synagogues for um, for solace, for support, uh, seeing their rabbis as, as chaplains. Um, uh, what are we going to do? Um, I lost two staff members through this. Not a, not their lives. Don't get me wrong. But two. One lost a home, and one lost uh, uh, one uh, had uh, the home. It came right up there. And, uh, and then I had a third one who was connected to everybody in the shooting. So I got three working under par, we're keeping on payroll and, and they're going forward. Um, I think we're gonna have to bring into synagogues um, and all over, not just uh, in this uh, fantastic uh, central place here. We're gonna have to bring programs, uh, counseling programs, we're gonna have to bring counselors in and it's not gonna be people coming and making an appointment to see a therapist. Some will, but a lot will come in and then they'll, what do they call, doorknob me. They're in some meeting and as we're leaving, they'll, they're going to say to the rabbis or the cantors or whatever, you know, God, you know, I'm still not back in my home or I'm in my home and whatever, my kid is going through this. And I'm equipped for some of it. I'm not a counselor. So I need people there more than the fantastic uh, Ezra program that puts mm-hmm. the therapist in once a week there. I need to be able to then take the hand of that person and walk them somewhere. Um, and uh, that's going to take a lot. We know that the intakes happening here at Jewish Family Service uh, at these are just taking longer because of the crisis. You know this from any other crisis uh, anywhere. But it is a long time thing, and it's becoming more and more. And because either of the internet or global warming, or whatever, these things build one upon the other. So someone who lost their home today uh, in the fire or had to evacuate is not just dealing with that. They're dealing with the shooting. And in Thousand Oaks, they're dealing with the shooting at uh, uh, Tree of Life. Tree of Life. They, they lost uh, their camp in Camp Newman. All the nifty kids lost JCA Shalom. That's where they lived and retreats out at the other one. Um, the support to be able to get the mental health uh, support for for a year at least, if not more, um, and we're looking at federation to uh, help make that happen. I, I think you know, Sylvia, there's a whole other area, and again, it's a it's the thing that no one talks about, right? So your family's been impacted. You uh, you your you, your financial situation is different than it was before. Um, and then you have to make a decision about joining a synagogue and sending your kids to camp. So there's also this long-term financial piece of the families that are impacted. We already have a challenge with affordability and accessibility of Jewish life where families have to struggle to pay to go to camp and pay to synagogue dues and pay to send their kids to day school. Now you have a, 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 an area, a lot of middle-class people live here. That's the other thing. People you know, see Malibu and they see other things, but a lot of these people were middle-class families and those middle class families are going to be struggling financially so we have like i said layers that we're going to have to look at to make sure that our institutions uh, are, are not impacted uh, more than they're already impacted it's a, it's this is going to take a long time and here's the other thing we you know um last year there was a fire not far from these fires next year there'll be a fire so in southern california this is the new normal and um, we have to think about that as well yeah um, we, uh, I just want to remind uh, everybody who's on the call that if you have a question, there's a little box in the middle at the bottom of your page, Q&A. If you have a question, you can type it in and I will relay it for you. Um, but I also wanted to just say that we uh, at JFN have uh, put all of those, the hotlines, the links to all of the different funds and so forth um, on our webpage as well. Um, and if there are other, <clears throat> if there are other links um, or that you'd like to direct people to, um, or information you'd like to share, please make sure to keep us posted so we can continue. I'm sure that the Federation's website and all of your individual websites will have all that information as well so that people can um, know what's happening and figure out how that they, how they can be helpful because I know that's what, uh, that's what we do, and that's that's what we want to continue to do is be be there both emotionally and in any other way that we can to be supportive. And you know, at City, I would say one thing, which you learn, unfortunately, in in times of crises. This community is unbelievably blessed by by its leadership, by unbelievable rabbis 
who are not dialing it in right now, and, and Paul is one of many, many rabbis in the community, um, incredible camp leaders in camps. Um, Wilshire Boulevard Temple as an enterprise, you know, Steve Leader and Doug and Seth and Donna and all the staff there, unbelievable. Camp JC Shalom, this guy is unbelievable and his staff is unbelievable. Um, we are, I, I am unbelievably inspired by what I'm seeing, seeing from my colleagues, both in the Federation and out in the community. It's, it's amazing. Well, we don't disagree, and um, we would say the same about you, Jay. We really, I know we, everybody's expressed that we really, your leadership in this has, and the Federation's leadership has really been incredible in pulling this community together and, and really sort of having, being able to have that 30,000 foot view and really thinking about next steps when those who are in the midst of it really probably don't have the ability to think beyond where they are, where they are today and tonight. So um, thank you to you and to the Federation for for your leadership. Uh, I don't have any questions that are um, open. So I think we'll wrap up unless there's something else that um, you all want to share. Um, and we will continue to be there for you, both me personally and of course JFN. If there's any way that we can help, please don't hesitate to let us know. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. Sylvia.